Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Janmadi Asya Yatoni Vedit Taratas Charte Shu Abhijna Svara Tene Brahma Hidaya Dikavie Muyanti Yat Surya Tejo Vari Mridam Yatavini Mayo Yatra Tri Sargo Mersha Damna Svena Sadanishta Kuhukam Satyam Param Mimehi translations. Thank you for very much for giving me the opportunity. Oh my Lord, Shri Krishna, son of Vasudeva, O oh all-pervading personality of Godhead, I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Shri Krishna because he is the absolute truth and the primal cause of all causes of the creation, sustains and destructions of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations and he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being. By him, even the great sages of demigods are placed into illusion as one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Shri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Text 2. Dharma projita ketavotra paramo nirmatsaranam satam vedyam vastava matru vastu sevadam dapatrayun mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba pare rishvara Satyo hirdeya vrutya tetra krita bhi Shushrushu bestakshanat Uh, Haribo Bharati Mataji, I think you're muted. Okay, sorry. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated, this Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold misery. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva, which is in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God's realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Text 3. Nigama kalpa taror galitam palam sukha mukhat amrita dreva samyutam pivata bhagavatam rasam alayam muhur ahor sika bhuvi bhavukaha. Text 3. O expert and thoughtful men, relish Srimad Bhagavatam, the mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It, it emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful, although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Text 4. Nemeshe nimakshetre rishaya shonakadaya satram svargaya lokaya 
Shahasrasamamasata. Once in a holy place in the forest of Nemi Sharanya, great sages headed by the sage Sonaka assembled to perform a great thousand year sacrifice for the satisfaction of the Lord and his devotees. Text 5. Ta ekadatu munaya, pratur huta hutagnaya, satkratam sutam ashinam, prapuchur idam adarat. One day, after finishing their morning duties by burning a sacrificial fire and offering a seat of esteem to Srila Sutta Swami, the great sages made inquiries with great respect about the following matters. Text six. Rishaya Uchahu Dvaya Kalu Puranani Setasani Tanagaha Akyatani Api Aditani Dharma Shastrani Yanyi Uta. The sages say, respected Sutta Goswami, you are completely free from all wise. You are well versed in all the scriptures famous for religious life and in the Puranas and the histories as well. For you have gone through them under proper guidance and have also explained them. Text 7. Yani Veda Vidam Shristo Bhagavan Bhadarayanaha Annecha Munaya Sutta Paravara Vido Viduhu being the eldest learned Vedantist, O Sutta Goswami, you are acquainted with the knowledge of Vyasadeva, who is, in the, who is the incarnation of Godhead, and you also know other sages who are fully versed in all kinds of physical and metaphysical knowledge. Text 8. Vetatvam somyatat sarvam tatvatastad anugharat and because you are submissive, your spiritual masters have endowed you with all the favors bestowed upon a gentle disciple. Therefore, you can tell us all that you have scientifically learned from them. Text 9. Tatra tatana jasusman bhavata yad vinishchitam pumsam ekantaha shreyas tanahasham situm arhasi. Please, therefore, being blessed with many years, explain to us in an easily understandable way what you have ascertained to be the absolute and ultimate good for the people in general. Text 10. Prayenal pasusya sabya kalav asmin yuge janaha mandaha sumanda matayo manda bhagyahi upparudata. O learned one, in this iron age of Kali, men almost always have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky and above all, always disturbed. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. Hare it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, Bhagavad Mataji very nicely recited in English as usual. And uh, Gita Mataji, that was amazing. Your, your pronunciations are very nice and uh, meters are very nice as well. Even the, the two long verses in the beginning, you recited them so nicely. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you Prabhu. I listened to your video actually, and what you were saying is just keep to the meter and it doesn't matter about the tune. So that's what I was really nervous, but your advice was really helpful. So thank you, Prabhu. That was wonderful. You did really well. Thank you, Gita Mataji. Excellent. Okay, so let me just share my screen. I got the PowerPoint. Let me go from there. Uh,
Okay, let's touch your star a little bit. So we continue in today reading the first canto chapter one. Uh, today will be on verse eight. So we will just do a little recap on uh, where we are so far. We were right in the beginning, but we just basically the chapter so far we did the first three verses over uh, quite a few days actually because they were very long purports. So the first three is a prelude to the whole of Shema Bhagavatam, uh, explaining the definition of the absolute truth that particularly covered in the first text in glorification of Bhagavatam in second and third. Then this particular section, which is four to eight, the sages are glorifying Sutta Goswami. This is very, uh, very nice Vedic culture, this. You will, you will, as, as we go through the Bhagavatam, you will find this all the time. Whenever devotees meet, meet each other, they always glorify each other, as, especially when they come in, in contact with a senior devotee. There's a whole list of verses we'll go through where there's amazing amount of glorification going on, uh, especially also when they, when they get touch on the Supreme Lord. That is uh, amazing, beautiful verses glorifying the Supreme Lord. So you'll see a lot of glorification towards the Bhagavata. So now we will go on to text eight today. Before that, we'll do the invocation. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo. Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskritam Naram Chaiva Narotamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jayam Udirayat Nashta Prayashu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Naishtiki Krishna Swadam Upagate, Dharma Jana Divi Saha, Kalav Nasta Disham Esha, Purana Koduno Dita, Namo Om Vishnu Pada, Krishna Krishna Bhutale, Shimate Bhakti Chadu Swami Nidinamine, Nick the Sweet of Soup and Letter Vagi Namjara Saka Punta Pada Katapana, Nomi Bhakti Chadu. Namo Om Vishnu Pada, Krishna Krishna Bhutale. Shmata Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nithinami Ne Namaste Sarasate Devi Gaura Vani Prasadi Nami Vishnu Sasami Vadi Prasadi So Paad Ki Jai So 118 Vetra Tvam Vetra Tvam Samatat Sarvam Tatpatas Tat Anugraha Bhuyu Snik Dasya Shishyasya Gura wo go yam up yuta. Translation of purport by Shukhopa, Shukhopa, the PJ. And because you are submissive, your spiritual masters have endowed you with all the favors bestowed upon a gentle disciple. Therefore, you can tell us all that you have scientifically learned from them. So let me just get in the participants list up so we can then. Actually, what we'll do is just I'll invite anybody to just unmute and read the, it's a short purport. So somebody can unmute and read. Can I fly, please? Sure, Palika Mataji, go ahead. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna, the secret of success in spiritual life is satisfying the spiritual master and thereby getting the sincere blessings. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakra has signed in his famous eight stanza on the spiritual master as follows. I offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of my spiritual master. Only by his satisfaction can, can one please the personality of Godhead. And when he is sat, sat, dissatisfied, there is only havoc on the path of spiritual realization. It is essential, therefore, that the disciple be very much obedient and submissive to the bona fide spiritual master. 
Shilya Shruta Goswami fulfilled all these qualifications as a disciple, and therefore he is endowed with all favors by his learned and self-realized spiritual master, such as Srila Vashudev and others. The sages of Naimanasharana were confident that Srila Shruta Goswami has, was bona fide. Therefore, they were anxious to hear from him. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you, Malika Mataji. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurum Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurve Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobishtam Apitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadapi Swapadam One day, hum, Shri Guru, Shri Uttapada Kamalam, Shri Guru Vaishnavasya, Shri Rupam, Sagar Jatam, Sagana Raghunathan, Vitam Tam Sajidam, Sadavaitam, Sadavitam, Parijana Saitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padam, Sagana Ram, Sarita, Shri Vishakhan Sitamsya. E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagat Pate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostite Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Ramani Hari Priye Vancha Kalpa Taru Vyascha Kripasin Dubya Evacha Patita Nam Pavane Bhyo Vaishnave Bhyo Namo Namah Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadada, Shri Vasadi Kaur Bhakta Bhuta. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shri Prabhupad Ki Jai. So, nice text, nice purport. We'll just uh, recap because this particular section six to eight covered the wonderful qualities described by the sages of Nandi Sharanya, headed by Shona Karusi. So we will just recap the qualities that were described. So verse six spoke about Anaga. So somebody can unmute and tell you what Anaga means. It was free of all vices. Yes, wonderful. Prabhuji. Perfect, thank you. Being free of all sin, all vices, all sin, same thing, yes. And then the other word in deck six was Aditani. Anybody? It's well, well read. Well read, yes, Adita. Adita, Adita means education or, or, or learning. So Aditani means you are well versed in all scriptures. Very good. Thank you, Panika Mataji. And uh, third word used in the text six was Akhyatan. Think of the word Akhyan. Akhyatan. What does Akhyan mean? Explaining, is it? Ah, exactly. So you have explained them. So the point here being that you can, you can learn something, but if you just learn it and leave it in your heart, if you are very, very, if your memory is very, very good, you can retain it for a long time. But most of us are not so lucky, so we lose it after a while. But if you have learned it and explained it, then you are likely to, to retain it for longer, much longer. So, so these are the three qualities in text six. Um, 
So yeah, to, talking about this, so reading, for example, we could say you, you read, see the process of uh, 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 assimilate, assimilating knowledge comes like this. First, you read something. If you read something, um, just like a casual read, then we're not going to retain much, for sure. The second kind of reading, Prabhupada says, is scrutinizingly studying something. So when you scrutinizingly study something, then of course, there's a much more retention. And then, the, 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 as I said earlier, the third, third way is then to uh, explain whatever you've learned. So idea being, doesn't matter how much it is, doesn't matter who it is. Even if you're speaking to your neighbor across the garden fence, just tell, tell them, this is what I read today, what do you think? So this way, by explaining it, we get uh, uh, to, 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 to solidify that knowledge within our heart. So that's fine. So number seven, text seven, it says, Veda Vidam Shreshta. This is scholars of the Vedas, isn't it? Yeah, so basically saying that you have, uh, you know the knowledge of Vyasdeva. So basically he's learned Bhagavatam from Vyasdeva. And of course, we know that not only just Vyasdeva, he obviously had other uh, spiritual masters, Shiksha Gurus. So he's learned from Shreshta, so topmost uh, spiritualist, he's learned from them, Veda Vidam Shreshta. And then in eight words today, the two words used, Shomya, Shomya, Saumya means. Says here, one is, is pure and simple. Pure, exactly. Pure, yeah, pure and simple. Shomya. So you see, Saralta, we say in Hindi, Saralta. It's in Sanskrit also is Saralta. Gujarati also we use the word Saralta. Very, very, important, but very important to have that quality because uh, unless we are simple in our thinking, it, we, we, we overcomplicate things, right? And, 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 and it becomes harder for us to, to understand things. So we need to be simple in our thinking. Pure, of course, as we said, we, we are uh, say free from all sins and that will be remain pure. But we need to have our mind very simple. We need to be, what's the opposite of simplicity? Um, complex. Complex, yeah. Complex, yes, complex. Uh, uh, but the uh, complex is true as well, but it's duplicious, duplicity. So, so those kind of people who are duplicious minds, they find it difficult to, to understand. So if you have a simple mind, sarata, that is our qualification. We simply hear and we accept the facts as they're coming in uh, and, and, and that way we, we, we assimilate them nicely. Uh, and then other word here was snigdasya, snigdasya. So the word snigda, we've come across by, quite often. Yeah, that one means, who is submissive. Yeah, gentle, gentle and submissive. Six mm -hmm. generally means gentle, actually. But here it's a double meaning, gentle and submissive. So we'll discuss more about submissiveness because that is the main, main point of this particular verse, submissiveness. We'll discuss about it in a minute. Uh, but so Prabhupada says about all these qualities, therefore, not Prabhupada says, the, 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 the Yastev says, that therefore you, sorry, the sages and I'm sure I'm saying, therefore your spiritual masters have endowed you with all the favors. So because he's got all these qualities, his spiritual master endowed. So this is the trick, this is the secret. You know, sometimes we say, oh, you know, I sit there and I've been a devotee for 40 years and I'm not making progress. So then at that time, we, we can't blame our spiritual master or our siksha gurus. We must try and look at these yastics. Are we anaga? Are we aditani? Are we akhyatani? Are we, you know, saumya, uh, snigdasya? All those things. So if something is lacking, then we're not going to be making that progress. So these are very, very important qualities to, qualities to remember. Then moving on to the, the purport, Prabhupada says the secret of su success in spiritual life is satisfying the spiritual master and thereby getting his sincere blessings. So how do you satisfy the spiritual master? By being humble, by being submissive, by asking the relevant questions, not overburdening him by, 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 by irritable questions and challenging questions. 
So those are the, the qualities that please. And of course, uh, serving him generally will please the, uh, the, the spiritual master. In the olden days when people were, uh, the, the children would go, the boys would go to the ashram of the, of the guru and they would actually physically serve them. Uh, uh, here nowadays in this world, especially is gone. We don't have that opportunity so much. Our, our spiritual masters are generally not living in the same country as us. And even if they're living in the same country as us, the spiritual masters, they, by the nature of their position, they're always traveling. So we're not getting so much association to serve them um, like uh, daily. But we can at least serve them when they come to our town, whatever opportunity we have. But the other way to serve the spiritual master is to follow his instructions. If you follow the instructions of the spiritual master sincerely, that is actually basically serving him and pleasing him. And Shri Prabhupada quotes uh, like the brief translation of a particular stanza of a, of, of a verse of a particular song by Vishwanath Chakravarti Chakra Thakur that we sing every day. Uh, and this is, do anybody recognize that? I please the spiritual master, we, we gain everything by not, by not pleasing him, everything is ruined. Yes, Ya Pesada. Very good, very good. Thank you so much. That's in uh, Shri Guru Vastakam. It's the last, not the last, actually, there's one more, but we normally go up to eight when we sing in the morning. Yes, Ya Prasada, Bhagavad Prasado. Yes, Ya Prasada, Nagati Kutopi. Yam Suvam Stasya, Yashas Pisanyam. One day, Guru Sri. You know, this, this particular uh, meter, the tune, really reminds us of a Mangala Aarti, doesn't it? Just think about the, the feelings of being in the temple room with all these wonderful devotees, everything so peaceful at that time of the morning, everything comes to mind. But the translation actually here, it says, uh, so by the mercy of a spiritual, spiritual master, one receives the benediction of Krishna. Without the grace of the spiritual master, one cannot make any advancement. Therefore, I should always remember and praise the spiritual master. At least three times a day, I should offer my respectful obeisances under the lotus feet of my spiritual master. So those of, uh, of us who have got the Brahminic initiation, we actually uh, we, we remember the spiritual master three times a day, morning, noon, and evening and we chant special mantras glorifying the spiritual master at that time. So uh, we look at a few other pop popular verses glorifying the spiritual masters. And these are also regular verses that we recite quite often. So some verses that, that, that glorify the spiritual master is Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langayate girin yakripa tamaham mande shri gurum sri gurum dinatarana by the mercy of the Guru, even dumb man can come, become the greatest orator. So even a dumb man like me can begin to speak. And even a lame can cross mountains. This happens by the mercy of the spiritual master. And, and we always, this, this, and the next two, two verses we are actually reciting every day when we do the Mangla Charan. Today we did it as well. So, Om Agyana Timiranda Sagyana Jana Sakshalakaya. So those of you who may not have heard the meaning of this, the beautiful meaning of this. So all of us are born in darkness. In this, in this age of Kali, this, the age of Kali is full of darkness. The material world is full of darkness, actually. But especially in the age of Kali is full of darkness. So this verse says, I was born in the, dark, in the darkest ignorance. And my spiritual master opened my eyes with a torch of knowledge. I offer my respectful obeisance. This word is shalakaya. So apparently it is said, so it's omagya tini ran dhasya So it's a pitch darkness that I'm born in. But what happened? Shalakaya. Shalakaya, and uh, Samacharya has explained, the shalakaya actually, you know, when uh, in the olden days, when you used to go to the optician for work, they, they didn't, there were no opticians, there were their weights, eye, eye doctors in India. 
So they would need to put some ointment in your eye, and they um, because you wouldn't they they that 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 necessitated your eye to be open for quite a long time, and naturally as soon as something dropped in your eye, I would close. So what that, that particular white or the doctor would do is they would have, they would have a contraption, it would, it would stick it would stick that thing on your eye and it would hold your two eyelids away. So this was that's called shalakaya, shalakaya. So that is actually meant. So the, my guru Maharaj opened my eyes like that forcefully, and and and, and gave me the torch of, uh, with the torch of knowledge. Then uh, also within the Mangalacharan, we, we normally say, Vancha Kalpata Rukesha Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patita Nam Bhavane Vyo Vaishnavi Vyo Namo Namaha. So this is particularly uh, uh, just the spiritual master, but all the Vaishnavas in general. I offer my respectful obeisances to all the Vaishnava devotees of the Lord. They are just like desire trees who can fulfill the desires of everyone. And they are full of compassion for the fallen condition of souls. So our spiritual masters, they're traveling all over the world, you know, preaching regularly, daily. Sometimes we think, okay, sannyasi is there, he's relaxing, but you know, not in his con. There may be sannyasi, some other, some other sannyasi is where they sit and sit and do their bhajan all day long. But Iskon sannyasis have a very, very tough life. They are going from country to country and there's no rest. I, I can give you an example of, of my own spiritual master, Bhakti Charu Maharaj, when he would arrive, we don't generally, because I don't live far, far from the airport, so we would go and meet him at the airport. So he would sit there for five, 10 minutes, give us a little uh, uh, talk. He would then, somebody would whisk him away to, 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 the, to the manor where he would refresh himself and straight away into meetings and programs. And so continuously, it, 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 there's no time to rest. But constantly preaching and all the other, other responsibilities they have with GBC committees and all that. So it's a, it's a lot of sacrifice. So they are like desire trees. So they're doing all this so they can they can they they they, they, they can show the compassion for the fallen souls like us. Then Prabhupada says that it is essential, therefore, that the disciple disciple be very obedient and submissive to the bona fide spiritual master. So here I thought we can take some examples from Shastra about. Uh, Obedient and submissive uh, disciples. So there was uh, in the Mahabharata, there's a beautiful story uh, about Sage Domya. So Sage Domya had many disciples, and uh, they would all meet every day, like as usual, in the, like I was saying earlier, they would live in the ashram. These boys from the age of, I think, eight, nine, they would live in the ashram until they are, they are teenagers. So the, all these boys would sit down together morning, uh, afternoon, and evening, uh, hearing Katha from Sage Dormia. But he had picked on two particular disciples. One was Aruni and the other was Upamanyi. And these two were given special duties. So these two were not in a class every day. So they... Uh, how was the duty? I've forgotten now. So one of them, yeah, uh, Obamani was given the duty to look after the cows. And Aruni was given the duty to look after the paddy fields because they would have paddy fields where they're growing, growing rice and they, they sustain themselves with this rice. But these were the duties. So the other boys, they would think that, oh, because these two boys are dull, so the that's why uh, Guru, Guru Maharaj has sent them to do, do these manual duties. But we are all so clever that we are learning all these uh, shlokas and, and, and all the Vedas and everything. So Sage Dharmiya once he realized this was the feeling amongst other students because they, they were laughing about them. So he wanted to them, he wanted to actually teach them a lesson and show them what the reality was. So what he did was, who was first actually, um, yeah, so first he called Upamanyu, I think. Yes, Upamanyu. Upamanyu, he called Upamanyu and, and, and said, Upamanyu, you fit and healthy. Why, how are you getting so strong? So Upamanyu said, I, 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 I eat whatever um, Guruma is giving us from the ashram. So he says, from now on, you will not eat whatever she gives you. 
So this is the submissiveness and obedience. So he stopped eating from whatever from, from the normal place where Guru Mata used to give. So then, but then a few days later, again, he called him and says, you're still not weak, you're still fit. What are you, how, how are you sustaining yourself? So then Upamani said that what I do is I am just um, drinking milk from the cows. So he says, okay, you will stop doing that also. So of course Upamani gets hungry. And then a few days later, again, Sage Dharmiya, Dharmiya Rishi sees him and he says, you're still quite strong. What I, how are you sustaining yourself? He says, because what I do, you ask me not to drink the milk from the cows. So what I do is when the calves have finished drinking the mother's milk, I, and there's froth in their mouth, on, on the mouth of the, of the calves. So I lick all the froth from the, from the mouth of the cows and that's how I keep myself nourished. So he says, okay, you will stop even doing that. Sounds like really cruel, right? Anyway, there was a point to be made here. So again, a few days later, oh no, sorry, so he stopped doing that, but he got really, really hungry one time and he couldn't uh, do anything about it. But there was a tree and then there, there was sap coming from this tree. So he just started to drink this sap. Now this sap happened to be very, very poisonous. And as a result of that poison from the sap, he, got, he became blind. And he became blind and fell into a, because when he was trying to walk back to the ashram, he fell into a, a well. So here's a situation where he fell into the well. And then because he didn't return, uh, Sage Dharmya and the other people, the disciples, they of course came looking for him. They were shouting, Upamanyu, where are you? He says, I'm here, but I can't see anything. So they went and they, they, they saw him inside. So Ramya Rishi asked him to do special prayers for the Ashwini Kumars. The twin, twin uh, demigods. And the Ashwini Kumas appeared, and by the, uh, the urging of Sage Dhamya, they actually restored his, his eyesight. So the, the point, okay, okay, as soon as was, his eyesight was reside, uh, revived, then say he came out of the well, and uh, Dhamya Rishi put his hand on him, and he says, You've been so obedient and so submissive to me that. I bless you that all the knowledge of the Vedas become manifest in your heart right away. And like this, straight away, Upamanyu was completely fluent in all the Vedas. So you can see the, the benefit of being submissive. And, he, and, and, and so say he wanted to prove that. And then similar situation with Aruni. So Aruni was uh, one time sent, he says, look, there's a heavy rain coming. And I want you to make sure that the paddy fields are, are, are okay. Go there in the evening, make sure that all the, you know, because what they do for the paddy fields so that the, the, the dirty water from the blood doesn't come in. There's a little, uh, like a ledge, like or, or obviously clay or whatever, just, the, just with, the, with the earth, they make a little bank so that the water remains. So when he got there, it was quite late in the evening. And then he found one particular place where there was, there was, uh, it was breached, which means the water was coming in. So he quickly, he was trying to find a way to repair it, but he couldn't do it. So what he did was he actually laid across that, that particular part with his body, so to, to stop the water from, from getting in. And he stayed there all night. And the next day, similar to the other one, uh, they, 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 they came looking for him. You can see he stayed there coming, looking for him. And he, again, he's saying, I'm here, I can't move because if I move, the water will come in. So once again, uh, Dalmya Rishi was very, very pleased with him, put his hand on his head and gave the similar blessing that all the Vedas become manifest within your heart. So you see, all the other boys who were laughing at them, they were studying for years and years, day in, day out. But these two boys got all that knowledge straight away just by being submissive to the spiritual master. So submission to Guru's instructions. Again, we can take example from, from here. Anybody know who's, who, what, who are the personalities on this picture? Ila Prabhupada from Bhakti Dante Shari Shatika. Perfectly, exactly. Young Prabhupada. You can see the young Prabhupada there. And this is the time when he's taking Diksha. Somebody's done a nice drawing there. So as we know, Shri Prabhupada received instructions from Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur. And those instructions were, anybody? Age in the Western 
speech in english past chairs and print books print books exactly so he imagined so so being submissive to a search master he, he took those instructions to heart and once he was young he had a young family he couldn't do too much about it but all the time he was preparing all the time he was preparing finally he left home uh, at around 50 he went in he stayed in vandavan he translated all the books because one other instruction was given to him was that for you to be successful to preach in the west you need to print books because all our literature is in sanskrit and what's the point if you go there if you speak to people even for hours if you don't give them some literature whatever is in them in their memory it will be gone in a few days but if you give them some literature then you know, the, the 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 preaching will remain so he did that so submissively following the instructions he translated all the books you know staying up late at night and he printed uh, the, the the for some books the first some small books and he had the, i think the first uh, three books of the first canto by the time he left for america and he left to for america at the age of 70 can you believe it age he, he he was 69 when he left he celebrated his birthday on the on the on the ship two heart attacks on the way despite all that you know if i was there forget about heart attack even if i had like a like a flu or diarrhea or something i would say i want to go home or to go back but despite all that he went and 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 he knew nobody there we know the whole story and he started to to fulfill the desire of his spiritual master but this is a really vivid example of of submissiveness and then his disciples follow the same way you can see in this picture of his drawing and it's actually a photograph of one of his early uh, disciple meetings so you can see most of his disciples are very young 18 19 20 21 most most of them and shri prabhupad and these people were not at all experienced they've just recently joined the movement they've been with prabhupad for five or six months and prabhupad would just say to somebody okay now go go to san francisco and set up a set up a, a center there and these young boys and girls would just go and and, and you know set up set up some centers there now even you know some of us have been in the movement for 20 30 years somebody if somebody today said to me that go you know go to a particular town in in forget about anywhere abroad just even in england to go and set up a center my god it's a tough task i don't think i could do it but these people were sent to strange places you know they were going to china to russia to africa to to all sorts of places to say of course all countries in europe where they set up centers and we know how that the three couples three young couples came to uk and set up the 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 uk center so this is again submissiveness they would just take the instruction from guru maharaj from bhopat and just take they get on a flight and come they had so much faith in the instructions of bhopat that look he is asking us to, us to go so we have no qualification but he will make it successful for us so this is how he spread the mission throughout the world and it, it's just that's all for these young young boys and girls in the early days how they just went about the business just just tremendous so submissiveness there so this particular uh, text we're looking at today is very similar to uh, one one very famous verse in um uh in the, in the bhagavad gita fourth chapter talking about how to approach a spiritual master with submissiveness anybody palika mata ji you will know it but let's see if anybody else does uh- Yeah. Okay. Somebody else, please. Yeah. Anybody else? Fourth chapter, Bhagavad Gita. Chapter four, thirty-four verse. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, Bhagavad Gita, Mataji, can you recite it? Uh, yes. Tadvidhi pranipate na praniprasne na sevaya upadeshanti te janam yani na tarvat sarvadarshina. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Bhagavad Gita, Mataji. Yeah. So it's very similar translation also. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him, inquire from him submissively, and render service unto him. The self-realized souls can impart knowledge unto you because they have seen the truth. Uh, and Prabhupada says, and part of the purport says, therefore, mental speculation or dry arguments cannot help lead one to the right path. Nor, by independent study of the books of knowledge, can one progress in spiritual life. one has to approach a bona fide spiritual master to receive the knowledge such spiritual master should be accepted in full surrender and one should serve the spiritual master in a mean as a mean like a mean servant without false prestige satisfaction of the self realized 
spiritual master is a secret of advancement in spiritual life. Inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination of spiritual understanding. Unless there is submission and service, inquiries from the learned spiritual master will not be effective. Will not be, this is so powerful, right? So we have to, so simply, very in that this locus, very personal, it means our submissive inquiries, not challenging inquiries. Also, simply by using, our, sometimes we think, oh, I know everything, I know everything. And that doesn't help. Just by our intellect, we cannot understand the, the shastras. Maybe we can get some knowledge. Yes, we can gain some knowledge. We can use our intellect and gain some knowledge and maybe uh, understand some, some part of it. But actually, unless we are submissive and we are, uh, we are ready to serve the spiritual master, we will not be able to absorb it, retain it, and realize it. And realization is what is important. If you just got book knowledge, it's not much value. Realization, putting it into practice, that, that will happen by submission and service. So some, uh, some lectures from Sri Prabhupada that I just took from very, very random places. Satisfaction of a safe and life spiritual master is the secret of advancement in spiritual life. In, inquiries and submission constitute the proper combination of spiritual understanding. Unless there is submission in service, inquiries from learned spiritual master. Oh, actually, I just realized this is actually repeating from the last, so what we just read. One must, one must be able to pass the test of the spiritual master. And when the spiritual master sees the genuine desire of the disciple, he automatically blesses the disciple with genuine spiritual understanding. And another place he says, one should not only hear submissively from the spiritual master, but one must also get a clear understanding from him. Yes, clear understanding, Prabhupada says. Don't accept anything. First of all, there must be submissiveness, no challenge. But at the same time, you must clearly understand. See, Prabhupada is trying to say here, you should not just say, uh, yeah, just like dogmatically, right? It's because you have submitted, it is not that you have to understand something dogmatic. No, submission must be there, but at the same time, you should have clear understanding. This is science. Not that if something is pushed on, something is pushed, you and you are, oh, my spiritual master uh, has said, therefore I accept it. That is a fact. Yeah, you should accept what the spiritual master says, but at the same time, by inquiries, by inquisitiveness, you must clear everything. Yes, God is like this, like that, whatever. But the idea, idea is that, yes, we should accept the spiritual master's words, but we should not accept it blindly, not completely blindly. Prabhupada says, ask questions, clarify our doubts. Because if you do it just blindly, that faith will not develop. So whatever is put in front of us, we must ask questions, clarify it in our mind. And, and that way, uh, we are able to uh, make really rapid progress. And a uh, couple of verses that I've picked up from Chaitanya uh, Tarit uh, about the uh, submission as well. This is in Adi Lila 1107. <laughs> By the Santosh. Simply hearing submissively will free one's heart from all faults of ignorance. And thus one will achieve deep love for Krishna. This is the path of peace. And then again in 1, 185. This is actually, you know, one of the things that when one of, in, uh, in Vedic time, one uh, physical symptom of being submissive. Is, is taking a straw between your teeth. Literally, you take a piece of straw uh, between your teeth and that symbolizes that I am completely uh, surrendered unto you. Dante Nidhaya Trinaram. So here it says, Dui Gucha Trina Dunhe Doshana Darina. Gale Vatstra Bandi Pade Dandavata Haila. This is Rupa Goswami, Asanatar Goswami. How? When they first met uh, uh, Saitana Mahaprabhu. But don't forget, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, both very, very successful uh, government officers. One was a finance minister, one was a prime minister in, in, in uh, Nawab Hussein's government. And loaded, they had so much money. 
but this is how they submitted to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with uh, a straw between their teeth. So this is the way to, to, to surrender. So devotees, it's uh, time. We will stop now. And I will ask for any comments, realizations, corrections from anybody. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Hare Krishna Standard Chaitanya Prabhu. Dandar Pranal, what a wonderful session. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. All glories to Prabhupada, who was inspired by Bhakti Sinat Maharaj, his Guru Maharaj, so that today we know who is a spiritual master and what we have to learn from him. When we were schooling away and studying in universities, we had no, no such knowledge. So Prabhupada is our founder Acharya and he's our key to Goloka. Well said. Well said, this is it. Where, where would we be without this, these kind of teachings? We're completely in ignorance. You see all the people out there that think, oh, I'm, I'm a doctor, I'm an engineer, I'm a lawyer, and I know so much. But really, all that knowledge is worth zero when it comes to the end of life. I mean, Prabhupada, you say you have so many departments in the university. Where's the department of the soul in your university? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yes. Thank oh, you. Yes. Thank you. I think we have to just follow his guidance, his principles, and then there is no doubt that you can go back home. Absolutely. So the beauty with the teaching of Prabhupada is that, you know, sometimes we read other scriptures, and yes, there is scriptural knowledge there. But here, Prabhupada is giving us literally all the, all the tools how to deal with it, right? You wouldn't know all these things, right? You would read something and you think, yeah, okay, I'm reading this book. But you wouldn't know anything about being submissive and, and all these other, other ways that you have to, 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 to behave in, in, in a way that we can get the knowledge properly in our heart. Yeah. So all the tools we got from Prabhupada. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Hare Krishna, anybody else? Any comments? Hare Krishna, Makund, Hare Prabhu. Hare Krishna, Vali I just, I, early in the morning, you know, ITV has done a series of Shila Prabhupada and disciple, how they were and how they were receiving knowledge and how they saw Shila Prabhupada and how Shila Prabhupada was instructing each individually. There's a, the, and every time you hear, even if you hear many times the same thing, you get something different. And their interaction with Shila Prabhupada was so humble. They just, you know, they just surrendered so much to Shila Prabhupada. Whatever Shila Prabhupada has said, they just, you know, they have no doubt at all. They just follow Srila Prabhupada so nicely. That's why the movement has spread so much because they have complete surrender to Srila Prabhupada. And like Srila Prabhupada did to his spiritual master. And they, 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 they're really, really wonderful to hear. And that's why, you know, I make a special time for, to listen to those devotees at the beginning. And it's just so wonderful. They're so submissive. I just thought I mentioned it because it is all about submission and how you get knowledge from Sri Prabhupada, my spiritual master. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Parikama. That's wonderful. Yes. So you can see. And also, the, all these other devotees, they, there was very few Indians in those days. Very, very few. Any, like, literally a handful. The rest of them all were, were Americans, Canadians, and Europeans. And imagine these people had no, no exposure to anything. They didn't know who Krishna was. Nothing. We all have, most of us, uh, are, are from an Indian background, uh, and and we have knowledge from literally from childhood about uh, about, about Krishna and, and and devotion service, and yet we are still so slow. But as Palika Mataji mentioned, the reason why all these young devotees made such amazing progress in in the, in the within within months they were becoming pure devotees, and and we've been here for years, 20, 30, 40 years, and we are still struggling. And these wonderful devotees in their, literally, like in the early 20s, they were taking sannyas. Can you believe that? Some sannyas is 21, 25, 26, they were taking sannyas. And not just, not just joking, they were actually following the rules and regulations and preaching very powerfully all over the places. And, and this happened purely because they were submissive. The, the speed at which they made progress was purely related to their submissiveness and their sincerity. 
हरे कृष्ण प्रभु जी मैं दंडवत प्रणाम से हम बोलो I just wanted to comment over here one thing, just to give a small cup. It's like um, the 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 person who teaches us driving, you know, it is so easy to teach a new driver, new learner, then to teach a driver, <laughs> then to teach a person who's how to learn driving. <laughs> so we are we Indians are those that second category where we know something we think we know, yes. and then we can't get that unwired. so that is why it is becomes difficult for us that's why we are not so successful i would say whereas the westerners they don't know i mean they don't know much about the indian history so for them it is just an open canvas so that they go everything nice for them they can tread anywhere but for us we have to re- remove the whole painting and then try to again do so it is never that clean sheet so that is why i think maybe pubji i don't know whether Uh, that makes sense. you make uh, you making a very very good point actually this is the point we are all we are, because we know everything that's the point we know oh, yes i know about krishna i know about ram i know shiva so we know too much that's the problem we know too much it's like that example that that somebody gives that uh, you know you 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 come in with your glass full there's no no more to put anything in it right your vessel that you come in with you, you know we, if you go begging you need to have a bowl which is empty you can't go with a bowl with full of so much money there's no more money to go in so th- we go in with all this in our mind and and to make to just just to actually also uh, re re uh, reinforce the point you making is that okay if you think about the americans maybe they had some christianity background or jewish background whatever they had so there was some something there and they had to change also a little bit like like we have to we we have a lot more baggage than they had but they had some baggage but one place that there was a complete blank slate was was ussr russia right because there religion was banned under communism so there was no religion so literally there was a blank slate when prabhupada went there with the early and made one or two disciples there then it took off like wildfire and in such difficult times because you know in the rest of the world you could actually have books but because religion was banned there these devotees couldn't even have books so the very first copy of the bhagavad gita or i think bhagavad gita bhagavad gita which ever they they took there they couldn't take a whole book because if you were you if you enter the country and you were caught with that book you would be jailed for 10 years just for, for possessing the book so they used to have have separate pages right so few would have like three pages so they would have this book not in a book form but in pages separate pages and they would then share these pages around amongst themselves to read the book right but even today actually one of the most successful yatras in the whole world is is russia there are so many committed devotees in russia and you meet some of them my goodness you know their sadhana is a thousand times better than ours their understanding their tha sadhana they just amazing devotees but again because of this this blank blank slate and having complete faith in the process Thank you so much, Prabhu Ji. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. 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 It's so wonderful to see them, you know, seeing so early in the morning and really, really fired up about this, you know, parikrama. It, we we were walking by, you know, by, by foot. We we're walking, and you know, it, it's so wonderful to see them. Uh, yeah, amazing. Russian, yeah. So true, so true. So if you, devotees here, if you ever meet a Russian devotee, spend some time, speak with them because we will we'll learn a lot from them. Amazing devotees. Yes, they are amazing. There were a lot of lot of Russian devotees that that yes. parikrama we went many yeah. years during during the Gaur Purnima festival in 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 Mayapur. They have a whole separate section. They have a whole huge pandal for the Russians, and they are probably during that during that time the probably fifteen twenty thousand Russians who were there in Mayapur at that time. Yeah. The biggest contingents of of from any 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 part of the world. There you go. Hey. Anybody else? Okay. 
devotees. So thank you all so much. Thank you for tuning in every day. Wish you all well. Uh, our, uh, uh, where is the, I forgot what the name of the in a second. Who had the eye operation today? I, I, Hema Mataji, sorry, Hema. So how can I forget Hema Mataji? Hema Mataji, uh, I, I, I suppose she's resting now. Shailesh Prabhu, are you there? I'm here, Prabhuji. Hare oh, Krishna. You, oh my God, you are there, yes. <laughs> Listening to your class, wonderful yeah, yeah. class. Thank you so much for, for sharing your, your experience. Uh, <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen the post yet on, on WhatsApp, Hema Mataji had, uh, I, I don't know what it was, but obviously, hopefully it's not nothing, nothing serious, but she had an eye I, uh, uh, procedure done today. Uh, so she was there. And while she was there, she just she gave a Bhagavad Gita to one of the nurses who, who was so pleased to receive it. He said, I was looking for this. Uh, okay. and, and also other books, another book she gave to somebody else. So while she's there, even having all these procedures, she's got her consciousness in, in spreading Prabhupada's mission. Hey, well, uh, thank you so much, Mother. Prabhuji, my apologies because the attraction went to my patch rather than the actual service, and I feel so bad now. No, 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 no problem. It's good. <laughs> now it's good to have the prayers of the devotees to make sure you're well because we need you to be well and fit and well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Dandan Pranam. Thank you. Okay, devotees, one chakalta tarubya shri kutha sindhu bhi ebhya shri Thank you so much. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. 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 Thank you, Prabhuji. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Krishna. Thank you for such a nice class, Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. I'm Thank in the car. I couldn't. Uh, I'm traveling, so okay. couldn't join very. But I'm listening to all your class. Thank you so much, Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. Nice, Thank you, inspiring Thank you. class. Thank, Thank you, you. Hare Krishna. Thank you for encouragement, Hare Krishna. Krishna. Hare Krishna Mukesh Pai. Hare Krishna will be the band. Oh, Anand, Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much Hare. for today's class. Hare Krishna, Jyoti. Thank you so much for your wonderful Thank service. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna.